Hi, welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. We're on block 10. We only have two blocks left to go next month. And in between doing those two, uh, two last blocks, we'll be having a discussion about squaring up our blocks, adding sashing or not adding sashing, um, how to add borders correctly, and so those will be some tutorials that we'll look at in between doing our last two blocks next month and we'll be able to finish up our quilts or our quilt tops anyways and we'll be able to show them to each other which will be a lot of fun now if you're just stepping in on our block of the month and uh, if you've seen the other ones, you know that we've been doing two blocks a month so we could speed it up a little bit and get through a quilt top in six months instead of waiting for a whole year. Sometimes we, I found that when people have to wait a whole year and they only do one block a month, um, they start to lose interest part way in because other things come up and you get involved in other projects and don't end up finishing. So we speeded it up a little bit, plus if you're behind, it's not a problem because the tutorials are always there for you to catch up and also to use in other quilts for more practice. Pretty much every single block that we have been doing could be done as a whole quilt. You could make several of the blocks and create an entire quilt. So that's one nice thing, or you could combine two or three or four of the blocks, or you could repeat the quilt with just different fabrics. And it never hurts to redo your blocks to build up your skills. And as we've gone, we've learned more and more things that we can take in and will help in the future with doing more quilts or at least that's my hope for you and the more that I practice the more that I learn as well and makes me a little more efficient the more that I practice now I do always recommend that you practice your first block with some scrap fabrics and then make it with the actual fabrics that you're going to use for your quilt top when it's a new block that you've never made before it refines that skill and helps a lot. So today's block is based on a four patch. Four patch meaning um, these four squares. It's actually a 16 patch block, but it comes in the category of the four uh, patch blocks. I know that may not make a lot of sense, but I keep uh, quilt blocks categorized and so this is in that category of the four patch blocks. Now this could be tedious if we were to sew, and you could do it, it's not that you couldn't do it, it's just that the more squares that you sew together the harder it is to match up our seams and the seams get bulkier and bulkier. So we're going to do a couple little tricks today in creating this that's going to make it a lot quicker and more efficient to make. Now this is one way of putting them together. Our four, so basically you would be looking at this as this is one four block segment this is your next four block segment and you have repeaters up here which is 16 block, 16 squares or 16 blocks however you want to look at it so we're going to do a quick method on being able to do this now since we're making 12 and a half inch unfinished which will be 12 inch finished blocks 
once they're all put together and we have all of our borders on we're doing this with a little bit of a larger um, block that will be sewn together cut down and sewn back together so forth but as you see how this is made let me tell you this is a great block to do and i'm going to show you a different way of putting your blocks together for um, a quilt that it once it's all put together would give it an irish chain effect now if you were to do them this way and put several blocks together you would create a sub design and we've talked about sub designs before that as you put blocks next to each other that are the same you create other designs other than the actual block that you're making so and in order to see that you have to make several and we've had a couple of people in our group that have done that and they've come out very interesting so I, this is one way to put it together I'm going to put the next one together a little arrange them a little bit differently and when I put the PDF together and post that there will be um, a p part of the post I'm going to add an additional page where if you did blocks like this and then um, blocks that are all one color so like your background color you would do one block and then you would do your background color you would do one whole block of that and then you would do another block like this and as you arrange them and put them together it comes out to look like kind of like a cheap irish chain and it's very quick to put together you could probably in my opinion one this size with the 12 inch finished blocks you could put one together in a day easy now if you're using a five inch charm block the the cutting out would be a little bit more and might take you maybe two days to make it it depends on the amount of sewing time that you have all right so let's move forward and see how this goes together so like i said that's one form of doing it but it has the same exact pieces or well i'm not using the same fabrics mind you but it has the same exact size pieces so this 16 square block has only four squares that we're using each square is seven inches you need two that are going to be your background fabric and the one that i showed you previously here i used the white for this one i'm going to use my floral and as you know this is my home to roost um, blocks that i'm using the fabrics from the home to roost line and so and i've been using a lot of the floral in there mixed in with some of the roosters and some of the um, blenders and some of the ones that have the um like wire cage look so but to do, for this block today these are going to be my background and i actually i like this so much and i like the pattern that i'm going to be giving you in the pdf so much that i think i'm going to make an entire quilt with the floral and the background um fabrics or or these two blenders rather so this would be your background you need two seven inch of whatever you're going to use for your background if you're going to use a light color for your black background you'll want two seven inch squares if you're going to use a dark that's fine or a medium that's fine whatever you choose then you're going to have one main fabric seven inch square and your second or secondary main fabric only one square seven inches so as in this one um, my first main fabric are the shells are the lighter shells on teal 
or more colorful shell, uh, shells on teal. And then um, my secondary main fabric is the uh, darker blue shells on the teal. And my background fabric is my white. So let's go ahead and see how these go together. So I'm going to take one of my main fabrics and I'm going to put it on uh, right side to right side on one of the backgrounds. And I'm going to take my other main fabric, my secondary one, and I'm going to put that on top of my other background fabric, right sides together. All right, so let me move the camera over so I can show you how we're going to sew these, how we're going to set up to sew these. Now, normally, when we sew blocks, we would, um, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Let's do this part first. Or to explain it better, I'm trying to think of how to explain this so it's going to be a little more understandable. There are a lot of seams in the 16 block quilt, or 16 square block, rather. Um, so today, we're going to do our seams open rather than normally we would iron our seams to the dark side. Today, we're going to do them a little bit different. We're going to iron all of our press, all of our seams open. It's going to give it a neater look. Now on this one, I did them all to one side because I wanted to show you the seams get a little thick in here. And this is just another option. And there's always a debate online, should we do the seams to one side? I like them primarily to one side because it's a stronger seam. And you make a quilt expecting the, or usually expecting the quilt to be used. And if a quilt is used, it takes a lot of wear and tear. It gets washed, it gets cuddled with, it gets loved, and you want it to hold together for a long time. So normally, I like to um, press my seams to the dark side. It makes a stronger seam. But because we're going to have so many seams in this, and if you're if and it's not as bad with it being an individual block and a sampler quilt. But if you're going to make an entire quilt out of this type of block, it's a lot better if you press your seams open. And so this is one of those rare times when I feel like it could be better. Now, I did the quilter's clapper on that. My seams are pretty, um, not too bad. I feel like even if I was to keep them all that way, I would be able to efficiently quilt over that, not a problem. But I just want to be able to show you a different way because this will come up if you're looking, if you're, and I know many of you belong to other groups, you're going to hear people say, well, I press mine open, well, I press mine to the side. The ones that believe in pressing them open um, will hands down tell you over and over it's the best way. And the ones who press them to the dark side will tell you it's the best way. And both have their right options to them. I prefer to the dark side, like I said, because it's a stronger seam. If you're going to be pressing your seams open and you know this ahead of time, what you want to do is use a shorter stitch length. Now, normally, um, most machines, when they're turned on, they go to a 2.5 automatically stitch length. I always turn mine down to 2.0 because you want smaller stitches for a stronger seam. Since we're going to be pressing all of our seams for this block open, we are going to turn our stitch length down to 1.5. 
That's going to give even shorter stitches so that when we press this open, we have less chances of those seams pulling apart. So the other thing that we're going to be doing differently today is we're going to be sewing a quarter, now that I've, I have my two fabrics together, right side to right side, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam on this side, and I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam on this side. So both sides, I'm doing a seam on them to start. And I'm going to do that on both of the ones that I put together. And as I've mentioned before, I like to piece my things um, consistently. So I do chain piecing because I feel like it makes it quicker. So I'm going to do both of one side, take, cut the threads apart, and then I'm going to do the seams both on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember to hold your thread to the side. That keeps it from bunching up underneath. If your thread bunches up underneath in the beginning, your seam is going to be off when you go to press it. So you want to remember, hold your thread up at the top. And you want to make sure that you sew your seam all the way from the very top to all the way to the very bottom. So it doesn't split apart when you're trying to put it together with another part of the block. And it's telling me I need more bobbin thread, but I'll be able to make it through this. Because luckily my machine has large bobbins and so even when it tells me that I'm running out, I still can get some distance out of it. So by chain piecing, what I mean is I stopped at the edge of that piece. I'm doing the same side on both of them. So I'm going to butt this one up to the next one. And I'm just going to continue to sew. My handy little blade saver um, these are that little gadget that you can put your um, used rotary blades in so that you get a chance to reuse them again and even when they're dull for cutting fabric they're still sharp enough to be able to cut your threads and I keep this right next to my machine so I'm able to go through and I cut my threads on the ends and I cut the thread that's between the two pieces. Now I'm going to quickly change out my bobbin thread so I'll have enough bobbin thread to go through the rest of these and then we'll finish up. Okay, so now I have my bobbin thread changed out. Now I've sewn my seam on one side of each segment. I'm going to do my quarter of an inch seam on the other side of it. So basically this will be sort of like a pocket when I get done. It will have seams on both sides. Once again, I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to butt it up to the other one so I can chain piece across. So now, I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit. Let's go 
grab my ruler. So for this next part, I'm going to be cutting down through the center this way and through the center this way. And it's going to give me my four two-piece sub-blocks. And you'll see after we get them cut what it looks like. Now, if you don't have a spinny mat, that's fine. If you have a smaller mat that you can have near your um, sewing table, that's always handy. If you have, they have some really tiny ones and you would just be able to turn that. Um, that would be wonderful. Basically, what we're trying to do is we want to cut our block that we've sewn together at three and a half inches. So whenever I'm cutting something, I like to have a solid line that goes across the bottom so that I can see that it's straight. And then I check my side, my size on the side. This being a creative grid ruler, I really love them because they have their markings both in white and in black. So no matter what fabric I'm using, I can see my lines quite easily. And they even have the sizes um, going across so I can see this is at three and a half inches really easily. These have become my favorite rulers and quite honestly most of my rulers have been replaced out to the Creative Grid rulers. I do have some of the Quilter Select. Those are also uh, very nice rulers. I like these a little bit better because they have little grippies um, underneath, little circle grippies. So I don't have to put a lot of pressure when I'm holding my ruler. And it also has um, little grippies underneath going around the edges. It makes it so that my ruler doesn't slide on me. Okay, so we're going to cut through the center so we want our edge to be measured at three and a half inches on this side so we know we'll be cutting through the center of this. And I always double check my measurement to make sure that I'm where I belong and my ruler is lined up from edge to edge. That way I don't make, well hopefully don't make a mistake. Without moving my fabric, I'm going to turn this. Now, if, like I said, if you have a smaller mat that you can just physically turn your smaller mat, that's handy. If you do have to move your pieces because you only have a larger mat, that's fine. Just cut each one of these individually in half so that because if you try to match them back up to each other after you've moved them, it may not be spot on. So just do each one individually if that's the case, if you need to move them. Otherwise, you can sometimes just angle it on your larger mat so that you can get both cuts in without having to move your piece. It's just better if you don't have to move your piece at all once you've made your first cut. So once again, I'm going to measure it. I have my solid line on the bottom and I'm going to make sure I'm at three and a half inches on my side. And make sure I have it lined up properly. And then I'll make my cut. So now, whoops. When I'm sitting down, I don't cut as well. It's usually better to do your cutting when you're standing up so you don't mess up. And I have just a couple little threads in between that didn't cut properly. So let me just snip those. I don't like it when that happens, but sometimes it does happen. And I'm going, and the nice thing is, is that this is sewn together on both sides. 
So I'm just going to remeasure this to the three and a half inches and fix my cut because that was not a good cut. There. I don't like when that happens, but when I'm sitting down, I just don't do as well cutting. So now you'll end up with four of these patches that are two by two, okay? So now we have four of those. We're going to cut our next piece and we'll have four of the next one. Let me see if I can do better with this one. Actually, I think I'll just stand up next to my table and then I know I will do better. All right, so I'm lining that up at three and a half inches. I have my solid line on the bottom. I'm making sure that my measurements are all straight. And once again, without moving my pieces, I'm going to turn this so that I can make my next cut going the other direction. I'm a little fidgety with my measuring. I like to always double check. I like to make sure that it's lined up really well and it's nice and straight before I go to cut. Okay, and I have a good feeling. There we go. See, it's always better when I stand up. <laughs> do as well when I'm cutting and sitting down. So now we have eight pieces. We have two with our background and one of our primaries, our secondary primary with our other background. We have four of each of those and that was so quick instead of having to sit and sew together so many squares we now have those all cut up. So now we're going to press them. And as I said, we're going to press these open, okay? So I'm going to set my, my stitches, which I always like to do. And I'm just gonna go through each one and I'm going to set the stitches where I stitched and give it a quick press. With them closed. Alrighty. So then I'm going to take each one and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to make sure that it's they're spread apart, not stretching them. You don't want to stretch them. And then I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to finger press in this seam so that it's nice and open. And then I'll take my iron and I'll press that. And I'm going to continue to do that with each of my eight pieces. And I just kind of hold them so that I can see you can see it open up a little bit when you hold both sides kind of against each other. And then I, I finger press it open and press it with my iron. So go ahead and press each one of your pieces and then I'll show you how they're gonna go to back together. So now I have all of my pieces put together. And that went pretty quick. You just had to stop and you had to press them. And now we're going to put them together so we end up with our four patch squares. So these are just going to get turned so I have my background 
and my primary opposite sides from each other. Now these aren't going to butt up against each other because we didn't press our seams to one side or the other. So when we line them up, we're just going to visually look really well and make sure that our seams line up and our raw edges line up. And you're just going to take your pin, put it in the top seam, and double check that it went into the center of the bottom seam. And then I like to put either a clip or a pin on the end just to keep it nice and straight as I'm sewing across and getting there so that they stay nice and even. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set each one of these up ahead of time. That way I can chain piece them through and it's going to make it that much quicker. So I'm going to line up my seams, do my pins on each, the middle and the right end. Yeah, my pin didn't go in straight. You always want to double check that it's staying straight. I have my cute tomato with my pins on it. Isn't that adorable? I love that pin cushion. And I do use pins for matching up my seams. That way I can see that they're nice and straight and I can always double check my pins are in the seam the way that I want them to be and that the pins are nice and straight in that seam. And I just have one more to match up. Whoops, I almost did that one the wrong way. And double check these before you sew them together because you're wanting them opposite each other. So I want a, a main and a background, a main and a background. That way, if we, if we don't mess up, we don't have to take out that seam ripper. And the less that I have to take my seam ripper out, the happier I am when I sew. Okay, so now we're going to do a quarter of an inch down each one of our sides that we pinned. And just lift them up and double check them to make sure that they're opposite each other on each one. It's always good to double check, never hurts. That way we make less mistakes and I've got them all set. So now I'm gonna sew them together and I'm going to chain piece them just to make it a little quicker for myself. And I just butt my pieces up for the next one so 
I can continue right along. Remember to keep your pieces straight while you're sewing. Because the straighter you're seeing, the, be the better everything's going to match up as we go. Just going to trim my threads. I love this blade saver. It just makes it quick for me to go through my pieces and get all my threads trimmed. Okay, so now once again we're going to take these and we'll set our seams first or our stitches. I'm going to do that on each piece where I've sewn. Okay. And once again, I'm going to open them to the back side. I just kind of pull these, not hard, just enough so that I know that I'm going to be able to split my seam right down the center open it up and finger press it. And I'm going to press my seam open. Remember, don't iron. You want to press, not iron. And see how that leaves my seams nice and even and they're nice and flat. They're not as bulky because they're pressed open. And when you have a lot of seams, sometimes this is the better way. And that's going to leave my piece nice and flat. And it will make it easier to piece it together. And also when I go to uh, do my quilting on my long arm, I'm going to have an easier time with my needle going around and getting smoother stitches when I stitch it. Okay, so go ahead and press each one of these open. Open up your seams and press each one open. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're going to put our pieces together. We're going to take our top two. So we have kind of a crisscross with this setup, okay? We have our first main fabric crossing this way. So each one of the squares, if you look at it from the corner, looks like diamonds going up one side. And our secondary main fabric, the, my dark blue, is going this way. So we have a crisscross happening in the center of our going across our block okay so it's kind of like an X in the center of our square happening and our background fabrics will be on each end in the middle and that's how you know that this is the pro this is the way that we're going to put them together um, now you can choose either way of putting them together and I will re-show you the other way that I put them together. 
You can turn them in different directions however you want. This is the direction that I'm putting them in so that when I want to do that pattern that I was telling you about that gives you that Irish chain effect, if you put a solid block next to it and then another one of these and then a solid and you vary them each row and you'll see that in the PDF because in the PDF that I'm going to be putting together for you, I will have a printout of the end quilt so you can see how it gets pieced together with the instructions of what you need to cut for it. So you can look for that and I'll give you the measurements for if you want to do it with these seven inch squares that we started with. And we started with seven inch squares when we cut it into four pieces we ended up with three and a half by six and a half rectangles we sewed those together and now we have six and a half by six and a half squares for each corner and now we're going to sew this side to this side so I'm just going to flip this over now that I know that I have my crisscross my background is where it needs to be I'm going to fold this over right side to right side and I'm going to fold this over right side to right side. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam down this side and I'm going to do it on this side. And I'm just going to piece that through after I've matched them up to each other. So do the same thing, match up your center seam Put your pins in, sew that through, do your quarter of an inch, and we'll come back and I'll show you how we finish it up. All right, so now I have my two segments put together. My top half is all put together and my bottom half is all put together. Now all I have to do, and I can see that I have my, my crisscross here, my crisscross here. I can fold this top down. And now when I go across, I'm going to be matching up three seams as I go across. I'm going to match up my center seam first. Make sure I get that nice and straight. And you're just getting your pin so it goes in the center of the top seam and the center of your bottom seam. And your top edges raw edges are matching up to each other right side to right side and then I'll match up my other seam on this side my pins a little off on the bottom so I'm going to adjust it to make sure that I have it nice and straight into that seam because I want my seams to match up to each other And I'll put a pin at the end so it stays straight as I'm sewing across. And I'll match up this seam here. And I can feel that it went in crooked and I can see when I open it up that my pins not right in my seam it's a little bit it's probably about a thread to two threads to the side I want my pin to be right in the center of that seam and I want my raw edges to be flush with each other on the top okay so now I put my ends together and I'm going to sew all the way from one side all the way to the other side, a quarter of an inch seam.
You want to keep your piece nice and straight as you're sewing. So once again, I'm just going to take my iron. I'm going to set my stitches where I just sewed. And I'm going to lay it face down. And just gently in the center, I kind of pull it each to one side and the other. And open up that seam. And I like to start at the center and work my way out opening up my seam. And I just finger press it as I go across. And get that nice and open. Now once I have my seam all open, I'm going to go ahead and press it with my iron. Now when I'm doing my pressing my seams open, sometimes I'll take the tip of my iron. I don't have it all the way down ironing across. I just take the very tip of it and run it through the center of that to make sure that it's open so that when I lay my iron down and press, it's going to not ruffle to one side or the other. It's going to stay nice and open. And I'm just going to press around on each one of my seams and as you can see my seams are all nice and flat they're all open and they're not bulky and when I turn it over to the other side now you can press it again from this side and I would definitely use my quilter's clapper on my seams. I'm not bothering to do that right now because I'm just going through a little quicker to show you the steps. And I always repress my blocks before I put them together because, you know, you move them around and everything else and they get a little wrinkled up. So as you can see, we are all finished with our block. I think this is an awesome fun block it went up very quick all we did was we started with four seven inch squares and we've turned them into a 16 patch block you could do it this way the other way that i did it was i had just one cross going this way actually my background made the second Part of the X and this made one crisscross and I kind of changed them where in my second one both of my backgrounds are on each of the ends now this would make its own sub design if you put them together this way and you put them right next to each other you would end up with you know the angles going all around and it would create its own kind of a chain look. But I want to create a quilt with this actual block. I'm going to use this one in my sampler. But I'm going to, I think I'm going to just, whatever extra fabric I have. And I know I have enough of this fabric because I fell in love with it and I bought plenty of it. And so I really want to make um, an Irish chain looking quilt out of it and I'm going to use that pattern that I'm going to give you in the PDF. Now if you're in our Facebook group which is Seaside Quilting you will get the advantage of being able to download the PDF. 
So that's one of the benefits of being a member of our group. To become a member of our group, we ask that you go to our business page and like our business page on Facebook. And you will find our business page on Facebook um, by looking, you just search on Facebook for Seaside Quilting Supplies, LLC. Click on Groups, then click Join. And there will be, I think it's three questions and it will have our rules there. Basically, our rules ask you to be kind to each other and so forth, which you should be everywhere anyway. And I, no joke, we would boot somebody if they weren't because we do not accept unkindness. Um, it's just not necessary. We have enough of that going on in the world. Our quilting group is a place to... Be positive with each other, encourage each other, and share and be helpful. And we have a lot of people there that that's exactly what they're like. And we enjoy that group. So you're more than welcome to come over and join in with us. We would be happy to have you. So that's how you find us. I really hope that you'll take a moment and like my video also, each one of our sampler blocks is being added to a playlist, which is just called, I believe it's called Sampler Quilt. There's already nine blocks in there. This is the next one to go in. We have two more to go, and it will complete a quilt. So if you're coming in late, that's fine. Start with this one. It doesn't matter which order you go in. Um, you learn skills in each one of them, and each one helps you build skills in the next one and so forth. You don't have to do them in any particular order. You can start in one area and go to another, however you want to do it. You could make an entire quilt out of just this block alone and you could do that with any one of them. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to Seaside Quilting Supplies on YouTube here where you're watching us. And next to the subscribe button is a little bell. If you click on that bell, you will see um, that you can switch notifications to all. Please do so. And then as no, um, new tutorials come up, you'll get notified and you'll be able to join us. And we have not just quilting tutorials. We also have sewing tips. We have tote tutorials. We have apron tutorials. Um, and we have a lot more um, quick tips and tutorials coming up. And another great thing about our channel that we do is we show you how to match up fabrics um, and we show our newer fabrics. As our newer lines come in, we preview them on our YouTube channel. So I just want to thank you for joining us today and I wish you happy sewing.